Welcome to a world where people are obsessed with nothing more than watching people beat the stuffing out of the first ugly loser they can find. So not much has changed. First, we are introduced to one of the more normal content creators, Paco, who is currently celebrating his milestone of 700,000 subscribers on YouTube, and with all the clout he has garnered, he has managed to score with one of his classmates, Rumi. She's a guest on his channel, as well as a new YouTuber herself, and she already knows exactly how to gain the favor of the algorithm. Paco asks her about her channel, to which she answers that she mainly does makeup tutorials, but judging based on what she did to the poor soul who offered to be her model, you're better off just doing it yourself in a dark room. Hoban obviously wasn't dumb enough to agree to do something like this, but the threat of getting your face smashed in can be one hell of a motivator. Hoban makes a fool of himself for the camera and tries to force the most unnatural smile I've ever seen, but once he is alone, his real feelings on the matter are revealed. The only reason he puts up with all the abuse is because while Paco is as dumb as a bag of rocks with his channel, he's a rich idiot since he knows how to rake in the cash. Ruby doesn't have as large of a following as he does, but she just needs to flash her jugs on stream once and the donations will start rolling in. On the other hand, Hoban has literally nothing he can leverage. He's not smart, he's not rich, and he's just plain ugly, so the only option for someone like him is to suck it up and accept that he's got nothing. As he returns to the classroom, he gets greeted by a dropkick to the gut from another one of his classmates who is enraged because Hoban's ugly face breaks community guidelines for being too disturbing. This is Snapper, and he's the cameraman for Paco, as well as a member of a delinquent group. However, in a fight, he's an absolute bitch, so one look at Hoban scares him enough to back off for a moment. He looks around the room, and after regaining confidence since he's got friends to back him up, Snapper volunteered to be Paco's cameraman so he could piggyback off his friend's success, and the same goes for Rumi, who managed to gain over 30,000 in revenue over the course of 20 minutes. Those figures have Hoban shocked to his core since he suffers from a condition called chronically broke. He starts thinking it may be time for him to start a new YouTube channel as well, but Snapper was also thinking the exact same thing. He goes over to Paco and asks what it would take for him to start a new YouTube channel, and as his bro, Paco is willing to help, but he's going to need an adult to help him sign up since minors aren't allowed to receive the revenue. He'll need his parents to let him use their bank account, but that's going to be a problem for him since he's a terrible son, and got caught stealing money from them, so they're not on the best of terms. Snapper then comes up with a brilliant idea and walks over to Hoban who's still laying on the floor. He curtly asks him if his mother is still alive since he knows she's pretty sick. But since she's not exactly using the account right now, he tells Hoban to go steal his dying mother's bank account because he wants to use it. The others laugh at Hoban, and this is a lot of disrespect being thrown his way, which most people wouldn't let that slide. But it's a three-on-one right now, so even if he wants to punch them all so bad, he couldn't bring himself to do it. Hoban later goes to the hospital to visit his mother and she's trying her best to keep a cheery face on for him, but Hoban knows her condition isn't getting much better. His mother notices all the bruises on his face and she is really worried for the well-being of her son since something is obviously wrong, but Hoban just plays it off and denies ever getting into a fight, just so he doesn't worry his mother. He heads downstairs after seeing his mother has to pay the hospital bill of 30000 to him, that's a whole week of flipping patties just to pay for her bills. But then other people go and make that much in 20 minutes without even trying. He hates how unfair life is, but he still has some amount of hope left in him because he gets to be close to his crush, Bomi. But with his luck, I won't be surprised if she starts banging Paco for the clout. Bomi asks Hobbin if he knows where all the beef patties are, so he points her to the walk-in refrigerator and she thanks him. Hoban isn't the only one who's fawning over Bomi because she's basically the idol of the restaurant, but just getting to look at her makes him happy. Just then, he hears a very familiar voice walk in, and it's the voice of Paco. He doesn't want to be spotted here in case Paco came just to mess with him, but he is shocked to hear that he came here to see Bomi since she has gone viral for being hot at Mickey D's. Paco's already got a plan laid out so he can eventually give her his D, and it starts with him giving her a challenge to make a whole burger in 30 seconds. Otherwise, she has to give him her phone number. He's really backing her into a corner here. But Hoban already knows it will be impossible for her to make that burger when she's still new here, so he has to do something before Paco steals his last bit of hope to get noticed by Bomi. Before Paco even knew it, Hoban had already finished making the burger, which he then places on the counter and explains that he made everything the exact way he wanted, even with the flag on top, so he should hurry up and leave. He knows he's going to get beat up in school by Paco tomorrow for what he just did, but it was worth it to keep Bomi out of his clutches. And it may have even earned him some affection points with her. 
Later that night, Hoban returns home where he is having ramen for dinner. But he's got a problem on his hands since Snapper threatened him into letting him stream at his house. And he even got Hoban to hand over his mother's bank account details too. On top of that, the ramen he's cooking isn't even for him, so Hoban spits in it before going to hand it over to Snapper. He's over there, making 30,000 in donations while in someone else's home, so he's thinking about getting him to split some of that revenue for using his house. However, as Hoban was walking over to Snapper, he trips over the extension cable and inadvertently disconnects Snapper's game, while also dumping the hot, spit-filled bowl of ramen on his face. Snapper is enraged and begins beating down on Hoban for costing him 30,000 in donations and Hoban can't believe he's letting someone beat him up inside his own home. But then Snapper crosses a line when he tells Hoban that he's probably the reason his mother has cancer, and in that moment, something inside him snapped. He grabs some kimchi and throws it in Snapper's face before giving him the most deserved uppercut of his life. Snapper punches him back, but honestly, he hits like a bitch so Hoban is able to tank it and keep fighting. Standing up for himself isn't as big of a deal as he had always thought it was, so he grabs some more kimchi and begins slugging it out with Snapper. All while the camera is still recording. Elsewhere in the city, a girl sees two teenage boys fighting with food in their boxers, and they don't have her respect, but they've got her interest. After the fight has ended and Snapper has been kicked out, Hoban is left with a trash house and he is starting to feel the pain now that the adrenaline is wearing off. He's also starting to worry about how much it will cost to fix all the damage that was done to this place, but he doesn't want to think about it, so he just rolls up on the floor and goes to sleep. The next morning, Hoban meets a frantic call from Snapper who is panicking really bad. He yells for Hoban to take the video down, but Hoban doesn't know what Snapper is talking about. Hoban had thought the stream was disconnected when the computer went off, but the webcam never lost power, so everything that happened after that was caught in 4K. Snapper explains that the video of their fight was uploaded to New2, and his parents are going to kill him if they see it. Not to mention how bad it looks to lose to someone who's fighting with kimchi. Hoban can't believe what he's hearing, so he goes to New2 to see for himself, and the video is actually online, in all its kimchi fighting glory. Overnight, it has basically spread all across the world, so Hoban worries that he has gone from being bullied locally to being bullied internationally. But just as he was about to delete the video to save himself any further embarrassment, he notices a comment thread talking about how the number of views equates to the revenue generated. It's about 0.1 yen per view, and the video already has over 10 million views, so Hoban's made a million yen overnight. In school, all the students have already witnessed the kimchi fight and Snapper is lamenting over the fact that his social status has hit rock bottom over this video. He spent so much time sucking up to Paco to get himself high on the social ladder, so he's got to do something to assert his dominance soon. He looks for an easy target and goes over to the class geek to smack him around a bit. But after everyone has seen him lose to Kimchi, his current social standing is so bad that even the loser has the confidence to beat his ass in the middle of class. And Snapper's usual strategy of relying on Paco to scare people isn't going to work anymore since he's ditched him already. Meanwhile, Hoban had just gotten to the hospital, where they informed him that the cost of his mother's treatment for the week has gone up to 120,000, which would be a problem if he wasn't rich now. Outside, Hoban checks on the video and sees that the view count is still going up, so he's making a lot more money, but then he gets sucker punched out of nowhere by Snapper. He's upset that he's become a laughing stock because of Hoban's video, so he starts hassling him to get half the money that was made from the views. Hoban isn't the same wimp he was the day before, so he goes straight for the nuts and starts fighting with him. There's no way he would give Snapper any of his money since it's all in his mom's account, and it was her details that he used to create the stream in the first place. The fight continues, but this time, Hoban isn't scared of him at all since he has already fought him once before, so this time seems easier. Late into the evening, Hoban is comforting a crying Snapper, but he maintains that he still won't be handing over any of the money from the video. That's where Snapper shows him a video he recorded of the fight between him and Hoban just now, so Hoban asks if he intends to post that one as well, but Snapper is smarter than that. If he tries posting this, then people will just claim it's stage and begin insulting both of them. He came here today to ask Hoban to join him because with his help, they can both make a huge amount of money. Hoban may not like Snapper, but he does like money, so Snapper's deal sounds pretty tempting, especially since he was Paco's producer and helped get him where he is today. There's a lot about streaming that Hoban doesn't know about, so he offers to become his producer so that both of them can make a ton of money. Snapper thinks he is being slick and has Hoban hooked like a fool. He plans to make the account his own someday to regain his social status 
and he'll use Hoban until he can make that happen. Hoban asks how he wants to split the money, so Snapper suggests that he take 90% of the profit and Hoban takes 10%. It looked like Hoban was about to agree to the terms, but he's not an idiot. Only a moron would agree to such a terrible deal, and they are not friends in the first place. So he flips Snapper off and begins walking away. Snapper is panicking again since his only shot at getting back to where he was is to cooperate with Hoban. So he starts trying to make a deal by going lower on the percentage, but Hoban doesn't seem interested anymore. He finally caves and agrees to do it with only 10% for himself. So Hoban agrees as well and asks what kind of content he had in mind. Snapper underestimated Hoban's intelligence, but since this is the deal he managed to get, he tells Hoban about his idea. They'll be making videos about Hoban confronting bullies in real time. This was the end of episode 1. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.